Pans. I'm the school librarian at Preston Lodge High School, Professor Pans East Lothian, and a committee member of the Sillip School Library Group. Um, just a couple of housekeeping points before we, we begin. The event is being recorded, and but you're welcome to keep your cameras on or off, whatever you feel comfortable with. But please keep mics on mute during the presentation. Um, feel free to enter any questions in the chat and we can come back to them during the Q&A &Q at the end. Um, or you can wait till the Q&A at the end and switch your camera on and mic on and you can ask them directly. I'm happy to see so many people today. Uh, fantastic. OK, um, so welcome again to an event on censorship and intellectual freedom in school libraries with Alice Leggett. Um, Alice is going to share an experience of being a school librarian and her planned author visit with Simon James Green, um, mm. book banning um, and author banning. Um, Alice is a committee member for SILIP SLG and is currently undertaking chartership, I believe. Alice, is that right? Yeah. Trying, um, very hard. Well, yeah. yeah. We're all there, we're all there, we're all there. Um, <laughs> Uh, previously a teacher, you moved to libraries along a held ambition in 2021 and loves being a part of a community of librarians, many of whom have saved the day for you countless times <laughs> over the past yeah. couple of years, you've said. Yeah. Um, okay, Alice, thank you very much. I'll hand it over to you. Lovely. Thank you so much, Derek. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us on this sweltering day. I'm sure there's places everyone would rather be than stuck in front of a very warm laptop, so it's much appreciated. Um, I'm going to share my screen and you're going to have to excuse me if my eyes kind of go off to the side because it's that weird thing where I can only see the screen, so apologies um, for that. <laughs> um, so hang on, I'll start trying, start trying to do it and see if it works. Um, hang on, there we go. Okay, hang on, sorry. All right. You can tell me when it starts working. Hang on. Right. Can you see it? We can, Alice. Thank you. Yep. We're giving you thumbs up and then realise what you Oh, just sorry. Yeah, I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. So you're still there. All right. If I'm not going to know now if uh, if, any, if if you all disappear, I could be talking to myself for the next 20 minutes. So um, someone someone email me if I, if anything goes wrong and I crash. Oh dear. Right. Um, so. Uh, I guess I was invited to speak. I think really I'm I'm just a normal you know school librarian, um, and I just got caught up in this this issue of censorship in my previous position at my old school, um, and it was kind of a perfect storm of events uh, where lots of things kind of had to slot into place to make it as public and as with as bad a fallout as it had. If it you know at any point things had been slightly different, it probably wouldn't have ended up in quite the mess it did, but but that's what happened. So I thought I'd go through the story of what happened as best I could um, and kind of look at it to see what we can take from it as a profession. Hopefully <laughs> see if it can um, give us some give us some good lessons. Uh, before I start, I just want to run with uh, run down a, a few distinctions when I'm talking. So um, there's a distinction I want to make really clear between the school that I worked for and the diocese that the school was attached to. It was an all boys um, Catholic school, a state school, um, and it was what in the UK. I'm not sure if you had them in Scotland, but in the UK, it's called a voluntary aided school, which means that most of the money comes from the local authority, from the council. Um, and 10% roughly comes from uh, the, the diocese, the uh, religious body attached. Um, uh, so that kind of affected how things, how things fell. Um, the diocese would have the, have the right to maintain a majority control of the school's governing body. So that, that's, that, that's sort of the distinction. So by and large, the school, the people within the school, the head teachers, SLT, colleagues were in the majority very supportive of, of me and everything that happened um, and the diocese were, were less so so that's that's a distinction because I'm really conscious that I don't want it to you know be a case of it sounds like I'm criticizing the school because that that isn't what's happening um, so yeah just a just a useful distinction there um, okay so sorry I'll start the story um, so 
background to this is that I was hired around about May 2021 to take over a, a school library that hadn't been used um, probably for about four years. They, I think they'd had a librarian, she'd left, they'd not replaced her, it had all kind of fallen into disrepair. So uh, it was a dream job. I wanted to be working libraries for years. Um, incredibly happy the school sent me off to meet Lucas Maxwell and uh, <laughs> some of you may may have heard of him uh, he's a librarian in the UK who's uh, does a load of good work and they said go go see him and come back and copy what he's done and Lucas is obviously a very inclusive and uh, and open librarian so that was a really nice message to get to say this is the kind of library that we want uh, almost immediately discovered there was a, wasn't actually any budget to do, <laughs> to do any of those things, uh, but we we kind of did a make do and mend approach, um, and I funded a lot of it myself. So we did books, you know, secondhand book sales and sweet sales and stuff, and we kind of got it off the ground. And the library was was really you know thriving and and, and very popular with students. Um, and then as World Book Day approached, we started thinking, you know, maybe we could use some of the COVID catch up money for an author visit. Um, and I suggested Simon James Green. Uh, there were three reasons for that. One was that I'd had a little Twitter chat with him and I knew that he was local to the school. Um, so that was handy in terms of like not having to pay loads of travel for an author because obviously we were on a tight budget. Uh, the other was that his books had been popular when we used them in library lessons. And, um, and the third was that he was funny. Um, we had a real problem with trying to move students on from sort of Diary of a Wimpy Kid type books. And uh, we thought that having someone um having someone who writes comedy books would, would really help with that kind of reading for pleasure promotion uh so we booked him it was all agreed um because we were a faith school i mentioned to my manager I, you know that his books did have lgbtq plus content the response was very nonchalant kind of okay um for context the school had openly gay staff parents students we had a policy uh, written to help support transgender students. We had uh, a student actively transitioning, which is a no small thing in a all boys um, Catholic school. So, um, you know, the school itself is inclusive and open and didn't it didn't really occur to anyone that there would be an issue. Uh, and then we get to uh, the week before Simon's visit and I'd written to parents to tell them that there was uh, there was an author coming and to say if uh, if anyone would like a copy of his book signs this is where you buy them from absolutely no pressure to do so but you know this is an option for you um, and without me knowing it someone we never really know never found out who sent the letter that I'd written to uh, the blog that you can see on your screen there and I haven't included a lot of the text that was written underneath that because it's quite it can be quite triggering for some people it's it's really unpleasant but the they published this article in response to my letter um uh and then the members of that blog um kind of contacted our diocese to complain about the fact that um that we were having this event um this blog is actually weirdly hosted in scotland so none of the mem and a lot of the members of the group i think came from america and all over so it wasn't in any way linked to our school it was just a, a sort of random online blog. None of the none of the none of the people, none of the none of the uh, members of the blog had children at the school, is what I'm trying to say. Um, anyway, so that 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 was that was sent through, and this was all kind of unbeknownst to me. So the week before the visit, I was doing that thing that librarians do, which is trying to sort out microphones and chairs. Um, I heard from one student who said to me, "You know, did you know um, some parents are upset about the visit?" And I, you know, sort of pointed out that Simon was coming to talk about books, not about being gay uh, I raised it with my manager um, he you know said okay that's fine um, and then on the Friday before the visit so the visit was due on the Monday and on the Friday I heard from our head teacher that two students uh, had been requested to be withdrawn so which was fine I went out and bought biscuits so that they'd have somewhere comfy to sit in the library while they um, while everyone else was at Simon's talk um, and then I went home that Friday evening uh, ironically, to read the Bible <laughs> to a Catholic gentleman who lives down the road that I volunteer with. Um, but uh, that was kind of as, as far as I knew things had gone. Um, when I got home from uh, from my volunteering that night, I had I opened my emails uh, because Simon had sent me the, the, the slides for his talk and I was forwarding them to our head for him to just look through. Um, and I found an email from our school chaplain um, basically saying, you know that the diocese have demanded this visit be cancelled 
why hasn't it been cancelled? Um, I was very shocked. I, I didn't know <laughs> that the diocese had uh, had asked that the visit be cancelled. And clearly, without me knowing, I think the school had been trying to protect me, really. Um, the diocese late earlier that week had released a, a statement. Um, so I think, I can't remember, this would have been like on a Wednesday or something, uh, basically saying that the visit should be cancelled um, because it was outside the outside the bounds or something I'll probably look at the exact wording but um it wasn't it wasn't in keeping with the with the uh, school's ethos and our head had said um had told the diocese no because he couldn't see he, he argued that they hadn't given a clear enough reason as to why the visit should be, had been cancelled and that if that instruction was being given to our school it should be given to all schools under the diocese controls it couldn't just be a, a one rule for us um, and we knew that Simon was speaking at a primary school uh, under the diocese control. Uh, so that was kind of how we left things um, on the Friday night. So I, I phoned my manager in a panic when I got this email from the from our school chaplain. You know, I remember being very upset. I remember <laughs> I remember um, sort of saying, if I have to phone up this lovely author and, and, and cancel him, I will I will resign. And I was quite you know quite sure of that and quite panicked but we we just sort of said we'll keep an eye on it and, and see things how things progress um, we were very conscious that we didn't want Simon to be in any way upset by any of this so we just thought we'd just just see how it went over the weekend um, I phoned a couple of my friends who are head teachers in other schools to sort of ask for their advice and um, and I heard from my union rep uh, at the school that she had she was aware and was keeping an eye on things um, so, so I'm changing my sheets, <laughs> make sure I don't miss anything. Um, and so Saturday morning, I didn't know this happened, this was happening, but the uh, school governing body had an emergency meeting uh, where they voted um, as a governing body on whether to allow the visit to go ahead uh, in light of um, events. And they voted, yes, they couldn't see any reason for it not to be. Um, I'd sort of written a rationale for the visit and I think that was used. Um, and uh, so I was, I was told that we were still going ahead, which was great. Um, and that evening, uh, messages started appearing on our school, um, the school library Twitter account that I run, sort of quite homophobic messages. So I blocked, del deleted them, <laughs> blocked them, phoned my manager again. Um, and Simon uh, had been tagged into a lot of these messages. So you know we had to contact him uh, my manager said you know things have gone far enough and um he gave Simon a ring and a meeting was set up on zoom for the next day the Sunday with me my head my manager and Simon <laughs> so uh we we had this uh we had this meeting and um and during that out this this was when I became aware of the blog and the formal position statement or until that point all I and, and the governor's meeting until that point all I knew was that the school chaplain had wanted the visit cancelled um and our head then in that meeting told me ab about the blog and that was really shocking and really horrible because uh, my name was was on there you know I'd signed the letter to parents I felt very exposed um and it was devastating for Simon as well uh, really upsetting call to be on but there we go um and uh, he also told me during that meeting that our school chaplain had um, emailed all the parents as well and um, had sent them, I think I've got, but yeah, just, just this last, last bit here, um, that the event was about promoting the literature of a lifestyle choice that is contrary to the teachings of Jesus Christ uh, and has no place in a Catholic school. And that had been sent to all the parents. Um, and he told me that they were still planning to go ahead because no one had yet given him a good enough reason to cancel. Um, and then uh, so we agreed with Simon that we, we'd keep pushing ahead as best we could. Uh, but by the Sunday evening, the diocese had um, contacted the, the whole school's governing body and sacked them all as a, as a group. Um, so uh, and they had um, uh, contacted the local authority. Uh, and so we were we were forced to cancel at that point. So I went into work on the on the Monday morning, you know, with, with the school sort of in disarray and just just kind of a, a vague sense of chaos really <laughs> going on um so um oh the, sorry i slightly missed something here um as when we were on the call with uh, my head and my manager and simon uh, our head received a call saying what well, um that the primary school local 
to us uh, had also cancelled their visit with Simon. Uh, Simon hadn't been informed of that at the point. So that was that was really upsetting. Um, and obviously going to a primary school is very different to going to secondary school. So it really felt like a felt like this was to do with sexuality more than it was to do with any concern about the content of the books. Um, anyway, so sorry, that was a little point. So went into work on Monday. Um, and then over the the following week, things sort of progressed. Um, the chaplain apologized to staff, but then withdrew it and then left the school and was never seen or heard from again. I still don't have a clear answer on, on what, what happened there, but um, he's no longer a member of the school. Uh, the Catholic Education Commiss Commissioner visited the school um, and tried to sort of calm it, but that didn't really seem to seem to work. There was quite a lot of ill feeling among the staff. Um, we heard that it had actually been uh, unlawful to take our whole governing body. So we were given back some members, uh, the parent governor, I think the staff governor, um, and the, the head and so on, and then the parent governor took over as chair of the governing body. <laughs> so that was a whole whole other fun fun uh, issue. And our unions, so in our school we had the NEU and uh, Nazuet. Um, they, uh, also I'm just going to skip forward and then go back. Um, they issued a uh, a statement um, which uh, dealt with um, dealt with our concerns, basically saying that we would we wanted the reinstatement of our governing body. And we wanted the reinstatement of the visit from from Simon. Um, I spoke to Alison Tarrant of the SLA on that Monday, and she was really great and um, got in touch with Philip, obviously, and Philip SLG. And later that week, um, they put a statement out in support, which I've just realised I've skipped past and now can't go back. So I'll go back around in a minute. <laughs> Sorry about that. Slides in the wrong order. Um, so they they were really brilliant. They put this these statements out. So we had all these sort of statements of, um, of support coming in. Um, and then um, Simon went public with what had happened on Twitter, uh, which was completely his right to do so. And obviously it was already kind of going public in other ways. It was already online through no fault of our own from this blog and so on. So then we had, uh, as soon as that happened, we had a flurry of news stories. So these are just some I've like gathered up. Um, this, these kind of from over the following few months. <coughs> Sorry, and that was, that was quite, um, quite frightening, quite, <laughs> quite overwhelming to see, you know, a decision I'd made on a rainy Tuesday in like February about World Book Day uh, to see that decision kind of result in in this. Um, uh, anyway, so that that was the that was the press interest. The school were very good at sort of trying to to keep staff um, staff safe, but uh, obviously it was still quite overwhelming. Um, and then um, the Catholic Education Service uh, put out a statement sort of saying that it was a an, an isolated incident um, and that Catholic schools should be LGBTQ uh, um, inclusive. Uh, what else do we have? Um, and then we were we had an emergency Ofsted visit to the school following all the press attention. Um, the Ofsted found out, you know, came back later, basically saying that the school was um, was an inclusive place and um, that our leaders had been doing a good job in in, in their work. Um, so that was nice. We had um, the local authority getting involved. We had Humanist UK. Uh, Simon got death threats. Um, it was just a whole a whole thing. Um, and in amongst all this um, was the issue that I think really um, really links a lot to what to our work was that after the dust had kind of settled for the initial couple one or two weeks um, on the same blog that had started everything, um, someone had obviously trawled through Simon's work and pulled out any quotes that they were they considered to be quote unquote inappropriate um, and and posted them as isolated quotes uh, without their context and they were particularly concerned about one uh, which reused the word yeah, um, the words of the Lord's Prayer and that it was uh, a scene of homophobic bullying where one student is bullying another uh, a student no other main character who's gay um, one student is bullying him and calling him gay, using the words of the Lord's Prayer to insult him because the scene is set during a school assembly. So the student is sort of whispering the, the words under his breath in a kind of covert attempt to, to unsettle the main character. Um, but they just took that one small quote and posted it everywhere. And uh, Scholastic came out and sort of defended 
defended the quote, but it didn't um, didn't make a difference. And it just became everything then turned. And rather than it being about sexuality, it became we were never concerned about Simon's sexuality or about the sexuality of any of his characters. We were concerned about the content of the books. And I think that's a really important point to note that that was a later concern. Um, and that is very similar to what happens, I think, we see this pattern again and again uh, over in the US when books are banned that that um, you know the books the books that have the gay characters the books that have the black characters <laughs> those are the books that are trawled for uh, for problematic right content um, so that was that was really horrible and really sad because obviously as, as librarians we 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 live and breathe context we it was very hard to sort of keep having to defend this thing over and over again um, this all resulted eventually in a strike. So um, the members of my school, the NEU, um, uh, eventually after a long period that lots of ballots and rebalots and so on, um, we voted for a strike. Um, it was the first one that the NEU had ever done based on the rights of, um, uh, of LGBTQ plus rights. Um, it was it was really interesting. <laughs> um, we were on strike for six days, which is quite a long, quite a long running strike, really. Um, and the, the legal basis of the strike was that um, our terms as educators, our terms of service had been undermined by the actions of the diocese because obviously we provide a, a fair and equal um, education for our students and we felt that we had been denied from that. So um, that was the, the legal basis, I think, double check that, but that was that was the, the main thrust of it. Um, the, uh, the NAHT, so the National Association of Head Teachers also took out issues to conference and um, passed the motion that it should be um, passed on to the education secretary, whoever that was at the time. Um, genuinely can't remember. Um, and um, the governing body, um, uh, we got uh, members of the new members of the diocese for the governing body. There was a big tussle over who was the chair. It just it kind of all just descended into chaos, really. Um, the Southwark, uh, Southwark Education Commissioner went on leave and also never returned. Um, just because there's so many random parts of this, I'm just making checking my notes to make sure I've not left anything off. Um, we had um, a request made to pull Simon's books from the library. Um, which we managed to stop because we had a, a policy um, which in part ref, uh, referenced um, ALA guidance. Um, and then later on, um, for these just some articles that came out later, uh, later on, we also got some really, uh, we used the interim uh, joint position statement, which I'll show you in a minute from, from SILIP and um, SLA. Um, so, I mean, that was quite nice. So as far as I know, Simon's fix is still there. Um, I'm just making sure I've not left anything off. Um, the strike ended eventually um, when it was agreed that the school would have a visit from another LGBTQ plus author or author who writes about these issues, but not Simon. Um, and I completely understand why that decision was made. It was voted for by the uh, by the members of the NEU. Um, but I think it was at that point that I knew I'd have to I, I knew I'd probably have to leave my job anyway, but I think I, I knew at that point I'd, I'd definitely have to go. Um, so the strike was was resolved. I don't think the school has had that visit this year, but you know the, that was what was agreed with the NEU. Um, um, and at the end of term, I and quite a lot of other staff members um, left the school. Uh, Simon subsequently wrote, um, boy like me, I wrote a few articles and then, uh, well, I wrote one article and then we uh, talked to the bookseller about kind of what had happened and Simon wrote, boy like me, which uh, was kind of inspired by the events that occurred. If you haven't read it, little plug, it's really lovely. Um, and um, and yeah, that was uh, that was kind of the the thrust of it really. It was, it was quite strange, uh, a very odd, odd end of the year um i'm just gonna i'll leave that up for just a second I, I included these slides because um i wanted to point out really that, my, that i had a lot of support um a lot of people had opinions and uh and uh, thoughts on what was going on but um the support from other librarians was lovely i had uh lgbtq plus groups sending me or sending our students really lovely lovely letters and cards we had donations of, of, of um pride books pride collections to the school and it was really librarians 
that, you know, because I was such a new librarian at the time, it was other librarians that kind of held us, held me up. Um, I'm just going to stop screen sharing so that, um, and I'll, I'll go, excuse me, I'm not very good at this. I'll carry on just for a second. Um, so um, this was this was the interim position statement. Sorry. So this was um, this is something that's still being worked on now, um, but it basically says that um, censorship within a within a school library context um, should be kept to a very bare minimum and should only be um, within the bounds of what is required by law. And um, that's really useful if you're thinking of writing a school library statement. Just by the way. Um, and these are um, uh, things that have come out since. So um, this was something uh, on the left, the intellectual freedom in school libraries. Uh, that's something I designed along with the SLA uh, using lots of uh, various pieces of legislation that can inform um, uh, your freedom to read policies in your school library. And this was the, um, the workflow document that was also produced. Um, and these were all resources that were part of a, seri a, a series of censorship web webinars that SLG and SLA did recently. I've included the link there. You can still access those for free. Um, I'm just gonna, oh, that's my Twitter. If anyone has any questions that they'd like to ask in private, just gonna stop sharing so I can see you while I just wrap up because <laughs> it's a bit creepy not being able to see everyone. Hold on, right, where are we? Right, okay, is that all right? Can everyone see me back again? <laughs> Good, okay. Um, so um, yeah, really what I wanted to try and do was to try and pull some threads out of all this just so that we can sort of see um, how it might be useful. Um, Another caveat of this is that I was really fortunate in that I had the freedom to say, um, you know, to, to stand on my principles. I, my, you know, because of my family situation, my salary was needed, but not needed to the extent that I couldn't walk away with a little bit of, of leeway. So right from the beginning, you know, my husband and I agreed that I would just do what we thought was right rather than trying desperately to cling on to my job. Um, and the other thing is that I was incredibly lucky to have a supportive school I think in a lot of other instances and in a lot of other schools I'd have been completely thrown under the bus um, which is why I'm always very conscious of, of saying that the school and the diocese are different beasts um, so I was really privileged to have that position to, to speak and to, to kind of follow what I thought was right um, and this I don't think anyone else finding themselves in this situation should think oh god I've got to do the same I've got to <laughs> we've got to go on strike we've got to, <laughs> got to protest it was a, a very odd like I said a, a perfect storm of events which could have gone very differently but I think it is really important that um, uh, that we look at what I think affected a lot of the discourse around what happened was a lack of understanding of what libraries are for and how that how they work, um, what intellectual freedom means, what a young adult means as a as a definition. <laughs> there was a lot of discussion about you know well young adult means eighteen. Why are you giving young adult books to to thirteen year olds and you know. There was so many uh, voices um, having a, a part of this, but because there's nothing statutory for libraries in um, the school libraries uh, in the UK, I'm not sure if it's different in Scotland, you have to tell me, um, but we didn't, you know, we were sort of making up as we went along, going along best practice, and it kind of revealed to me that you know, it's kind of a bit of a house of cards, not just for libraries, but for the way faith schools work in the UK. You know, we didn't, there was a massive tussle over who's in charge. Is it the council? Is it the diocese? It was crazy. So, you know, a lack of understanding is, is, is important. And I think, you know, as, as best we can, we should speak out about who we are and what we do and what we're for. Um, and, um, and in the same vein, disinformation is, is our enemy. Um, we saw this with the with the context being pulled out of quote um, the, sorry the quote being pulled out of context. You know, so many people. We had diocese, Catholic Education, England, NEU, Nazua, NHT, Humanist, Scholastic, <laughs> Silip. Well, I've got a whole list here. National Press, blogs, Twitter. All of these piece, people coming in, and I'd read so much online. And through all of this, I couldn't say anything. I couldn't. You know, it wasn't until I left my role that I could I could start talking really. Um, through all of this. I'd read so much that was just nonsense and hadn't happened or was a misinterpretation of the facts. My favourite one was that um, my manager and Simon were in cahoots and were trying to uh, queer young boys because they'd been at Cambridge together and were both gay. The fact that they're 20 years apart in age was clearly not, and had never met, was not an issue. Um, I mean, that's it's, it's just completely mad. <laughs> uh, the other part of it, I think, is that 
um, our, prefer our profession is not always, and I know that's not always the case, but we're not always respected in the context and the workings of a school. Um, my school tried really hard to protect me, but actually that was more damaging than it was was helpful. You know, it was a, it meant I had this horrible, if I'd been involved in the conversation from the beginning, I'm not saying things would have been different, but it might have helped to explain what YA is. You know, we could have, changes could have been made basically to, or at least it wouldn't have got so acrimonious, I think, um, if we'd just been able to have a chat, you know, if, if the school chaplain had just come and said, oh, I'm a bit concerned about this, can we have a chat? But none of those, you know, I think it was, she's a librarian, she stays in the library, she doesn't really need to have a voice or an opinion. I think they were quite shocked when I did have one. Um, <laughs> when, I, when we got uh, SLA, and when the SLA brought out the big guns and <laughs> still it stepped up, it was quite funny. But um, yeah, I think that we, in that same vein, we should try and advocate for ourselves to be included where we can, to, to go to governor's meetings, to speak to the head teacher, to, to kind of be seen as the professionals that we are, not as someone that just, you know, checks books in and out and stamp them we're we're so much more than that and I think you know we're very good at telling each other that and I think we have to tell lots of other people that as well as much as we can um and uh, also join a union would be my advice for anyone <laughs> if, you're, if you're concerned of um of anything like that join any union um obviously I don't want to be like the ghost at the feast and be like this could happen to you um but it, it could it's happening more and more um it's still happening I think because I'm kind of almost like ground zero for this now I get messages from librarians very often and um we you know it's still happening it's just happening very quietly in other schools um they're better at hushing it up apparently uh we were very loud um we've seen it you know we've seen we see it all the time with things like drag queen story hour and with the big fuss over um, maybe you didn't have this in Scotland but there was a big fuss about a uh, welcome to St Hell which the graphic novel which um, depicts a uh, um, transgender girl going through changes and um, that was protested against um, and I, I worry that it will keep happening I don't know that we are I don't think I'm hope. I think we won't end up as bad it's not as bad as it was as it can, can be in America but I think it's worth noting that a lot of the things that happened to me, to me and to Simon were things that it came, you know, they were things that have happened in America, you know, the, the, the complaint came from a source unconnected from the school. It was very, the, the people that originally started complaining were from a very far right blog, you know, they, as well as thinking Simon is dangerous for children, they also don't believe in COVID, they absolutely love Trump, you know, it was a comorbidities of, of obsession there. Um, uh, the extreme language that we'd seen in America used over here, you know, when I saw myself being called a groomer online, it was horrific the first time. I just thought that's the worst thing I've ever heard. And now I see it happening to people every day. The language being used is just um, just abhorrent. Um, I know it's it's really hard to, uh, especially for people working in faith schools, to think about how you, you know, how we balance all these responsibilities and without really firm guidance you know we're sort of helping each other really but there are resources out there for you so like I said about the the censorship series and obviously things like this where we're just talking about it and, and being there to help each other um you know it's really hard to be the the root cause of a, <laughs> of a of a thing that does a lot of damage to a school that I absolutely love but I think it's useful to and, and helpful to try and make sure that it doesn't if it does happen elsewhere that we have those resources so that no one else is quite as as isolated as I was when it first started um I think that is all the stuff I had to say probably um <laughs> oh uh the, just to say um uh yeah, no, I did say that. Contact me um, privately if there's, if there's something that you do want to know but didn't want to ask publicly. So, yes, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Take over, Derek. You <laughs> ask people what they need. <laughs> I'm not very good at summing up, sorry. <laughs> Alison, I think, you know, that what to say here. I mean, thank you so much. That was such oh, a heartfelt, sorry. insightful, and, you know, extremely helpful oh. session. Um, we'll definitely be taking. Um, everyone here will be taking something from this. Like, you mean you raised so so many 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 interesting points. Um, oh, where, where to begin? Um, <laughs> for, first of all, um, that must have been such a tricky time for you, professionally and personally. 
Um, and we all know as school librarians, we are kind of on our own in schools. It's lone working. Um, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a unique role within the school. Um, like many, many non-school librarians tend not to understand. Um, and yeah. I, I thoroughly agree that we need to shout a little bit louder and promote ourselves. This was something that was uh, mentioned and touched upon um, at the first Silicon conference recently. Um, one of the things I'd like to ask you, before we go to questions, I'm being extremely selfish here. Uh, one, yeah. one, of the thing, one of the things I'd like to ask you, Alice, is um, you, you mentioned the legality um, of uh, you know concerns around uh, intellectual freedom and access to information, um, and the, the you know the, the importance of a an up to date, robust uh, school library policy, collections mm. develop, development policy. Um, what would you how, would you? Is there any other recommendations around this that you would you would care to share, Alice? Sorry. Let me think. So. Uh, in terms of, I think, to be very clear about a policy, I think a lot of us have policies, and I was the same, where it's kind of like, we're open at four o'clock on, you know, Monday, whatever. And I think we need to start um, specifically saying um, who has access and what, what those access rights are. Um, so I was really lucky in my new school, um, I. Uh, the first thing I did was write a policy when I got there and, and they've been really supportive and, and they're great. They'd had Simon to visit previously so I knew when I applied for the job it would hopefully be quite safe. Um, but um, I think the policies need to kind of try and pull in because we don't have anything that's, we don't have what the American Library Association has for example which is like a, a library bill of rights but we can say that we affirm those rights. We can say that um, we affirm the UK Human Rights Act, We can, which all kind of have issues about censorship and about freedom of information. Um, so that's why the, the kind of infographic thing, not infographic, but the poster, which is massive, but we left it massive because we needed to put lots in. Paul's quotes from all those organizations, from Ofsted, from, uh, from SLA, from SILIP, from, um, from the American Library Association, from um, Libraries Connect, all these different things. And we took all those quotes that, that refer to freedom to read. And then we sort of said, th and, and then we use that as a basis of policy to say that children have a right to, to read what they, you know, parents have a right to tell their children not to read a certain book. That's fine. But what they don't have a right to do is to take that is to take that right away from other children and also we we spoke about in my policy we spoke about who we will accept challenges from um so it would need to be someone connected to the school so it can't be some blog somewhere emailing saying why have you got this book on your shelves you know we will only deal with people who are actively connected to the school um and also the other thing that we included was um having a student voice as part of the consideration committee if a book is challenged then it will be read and we built a committee based around who so it would be the head teacher the librarian the head of literacy and a, a student representative and i think having young people's voices included in that is is really important um it would be nice to have something like the ala i know that silip are working on um on their intellectual freedom statement and hopefully that will come sort of by the end of the year maybe and then we can also sort of use that as a as a basis as well but at the moment it's just about pulling everything together does that make sense or i don't even know if that answered your question sorry oh, absolutely that was great yeah absolutely alice that was a, that was a great answer <laughs>